At first glance, a fire may seem like a devastating event for a forest or prairie. However, periodic fires can be beneficial for the environment as well. Fires periodically clear the ground of leaves, branches, and other dead plant matter, making room for new plants to grow. They also break down this debris into nutrients which can be absorbed back into the soil, enriching the ground for future plant growth and the other life forms that depend on it. Some tree species even thrive in environments where fires periodically occur. The giant sequoia, the largest tree on earth, begins its life as tiny seeds in cones that are serotonous, meaning the cones will only fully open when exposed to high heat such as from a forest fire. Fires also clear out the forest floor, creating a more favorable environment for sequoia seeds to sprout and take root. And fire also thins out competing tree species, leaving the more fire-resistant sequoias behind. One North Carolina tree that benefits from fire is the longleaf pine. Like the giant sequoia, the longleaf pine is resistant to fire, even in the early part of its life in what's known as the grass state. Naturally occurring longleaf pine habitats are often pure stands of widely spaced trees known as pine savannas. Periodic fires both thin out competing tree species and help recycle nutrients back into the soil. The ground beneath the pines hosts a number of grasses, carnivorous plants, and other ground-dwelling plant species. This ground cover, in turn, provides an ideal habitat for a variety of animal species, making pine savannas rich in biodiversity. There are limits to the beneficial effects of fire, however. A fire that is too hot can deplete the soil of microorganisms on which the ecosystem depends. This, in turn, can make regrowth after a fire more difficult. One way to promote the benefits of fire while minimizing the negative impacts is through the use of prescribed burns. Prescribed burns, also called controlled burns, are low intensity, low temperature fires that are deliberately set and maintained within a controlled area. They are typically conducted in forests or grasslands that are being maintained as wildlife areas such as national and state parks and the museum's Prairie Ridge Ecostation. Prescribed burns are always conducted by a team of professionals who both spread the fire through the burn area and make sure that the fire does not spread beyond it. Such burns should never be attempted by those without extensive training and experience. At Prairie Ridge, Museum staff conduct a burn of one of the three areas of prairie habitat roughly once a year. Burns are only conducted when weather conditions are just right. No precipitation, moderate humidity, and light but steady winds that will blow the smoke away from highly populated areas. Fires are set with a tool called a drip torch, which ignites a special fuel and releases it onto the ground. While some members of the burn team systematically spread the fire, others patrol the edges of the burn area, carefully keeping the fire in check with tools such as rakes, flappers, and water sprayers. The low intensity controlled fire carefully burns away dead grasses, brambles, and overgrowth from the prairie, making way for new growth. The first shoots of new plants appear within a week. And just months later, the prairie is flourishing once again. 